Saudi Arabia is crazy. One giant family controls everything. Reports say there are anywhere from 5,000 to over 15,000 members of the Saud family, with 2,000 allegedly controlling the wealth and the power. Some estimates put their net worth at more than one trillion dollars. One trillion. That's like the number of stars in the universe, and the number of times women have been betrayed by Susan Collins. <laughs> One of the things that we have tried to do uh, is storytell and attack the white space that exists in the news cycle. So a lot of American news is bogged down with tweets and gaffes, um, and oftentimes it doesn't capture larger trends that are happening around the world. Since we are a show on a global platform speaking to 190 different countries, I wanted Patriot Act to communicate to the world. And I've often felt, you know, being an Indian American Muslim, I've had an insider-outsider relationship with America where I was born here, I'm from the States, I'm very American, and at the same time, I'm kind of like, what is going on in America? Coincidentally, that's the way the rest of the world looks at America. This isn't just cherry-picked liberal snowflake data. According to the Cato Institute, a libertarian think tank, the chances of you being killed by a refugee terrorist are one in 3.6 billion. It's not gonna happen. You have a better chance of actually being a Franco brother. <laughs> And that is just refugees. The odds of immigrants committing violent crime are also low. Since 1980, the immigrant share of the U.S. population has more than doubled. At the same time, the violent crime rate has decreased by more than a third. You see that area right there, that big gap? That's immigrant dads yelling at their kids, don't fuck this up, they'll deport us. We are dark books, okay? We're not gonna get in trouble. Research has shown time and time again that immigrants, documented or undocumented, do not contribute to an increase in violent crime. But try telling that to Donald Trump. As human beings, storytelling is a very universal quality. It's a thing that we all sort of internally are, are drawn to, and we've been drawn to it since the beginning of time. Um, for my show specifically, news and politics is very divisive, but if you can ground it in a great story, people are able to connect to it. And uh, it's one of the things I try to bring, bring on the show is, is, is go, yeah, sure, we're gonna talk about this, this very divisive issue or this huge topic that seems like, you know, you can't really wrap your, your head around it. Let's anchor it in this human interest piece or let's anchor it in the voices of these people who haven't been heard. There is this phenomenon of white affirmative action and it's called legacy admissions in universities. They give preference to alumni children who also make up at a lot of elite schools 10 to 20% of the population. That's an affirmative action. Right, it's an affirmative action for the wealthy. Legacy students take up a significant number at the Ivies. Look at the chart. If these Asian parents really cared about the numbers, in fairness, they would be going after legacy admissions first. I can't say that a great film, television show, or even song can change the world, but I can say that hopefully uh, great art and great storytelling has the ability to strike a chord in people's hearts that enacts change in their perception of the world and hopefully in their day-to-day -day actions. And so all we're doing as, as artists and storytellers is we're trying to do great work and hopefully we find that sort of moment to connect with people and hopefully that changes their perception of the world.